A common question is what is the best steroid? And the answer is Superdrol. If you want to turn into f***ing Superman, this sh is what you want to try. It's got 400 anabolic ratings, so four times as much gains as testosterone, and only 20 androgenicity, so five times less side effects. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. Today we're going to be reacting to a TikTok that I was tagged in. It is about the best steroid, a well-kept secret. And this video is by Musa Aesthetics on TikTok. And this guy makes a pretty bold claim about a compound. And I kind of wanted to just give my analysis on it and give my uh, insight on if it's an accurate statement or not. He basically describes here what he thinks is the best anabolic steroid bar none in a one minute clip and then explains why. A common question is what is the best steroid? And the answer is Superdrol. If you want to turn into fucking Superman, this shit is what you want to try. It's got 400 anabolic ratings, so four times as much gains as testosterone and only 20 androgenicity, so five times less side effects. Just watch. Okay, so I'll let him finish actually. Watch your liver and kidney levels and you'll be all good. So he says, just watch your liver and kidney levels and you'll be all good. And this is the best compound for turning into Superman. So besides the fact that you can probably only tolerate this compound for a handful of weeks at best, which frankly would be probably way too long anyways, and you're not gonna build a significant amount of muscle tissue in a three to four week span, it's extremely liver toxic. You're not even gonna be able to eat properly when you're on it to actually make use of the enhanced muscle protein synthesis and the properties it has that set it apart from certain other compounds, but in addition, the anabolic to androgenic rate thing, I don't know why this is so misinterpreted. When you see a Hirschberger assay and you see rodent models showing a tissue selectivity level of you know 400 to 25, it does not fucking mean that 400 means it's four times stronger than test. If you took 500 migs of test versus 500 mg solo of trend, which is gonna build more muscle? Keep in mind, trend has no estrogen conversion. Um, when you look at the anabolic rating chart though, it's going to indicate that trend would absolutely murder testosterone. You would think, oh, many, multiple times more amounts of muscle, way more muscle. In practical application, does that actually happen? Fuck no, dude. Same thing with Superdrol. When you take Superdrol, milligram for milligram with testosterone, are you going to gain exactly four times more muscle? No, you're not. None of these compounds, the ratings of the 400 to fucking whatever, it does not mean however many times more anabolic rating in a Hirschberger assay than testosterone is the root androgen of comparison. It doesn't mean it's going to be exactly that many times more potent at building muscle. There's a reason why testosterone is the base of many cycles and why many guys rely on it very heavily for the majority of their progress. A lot of guys I know don't even use other anabolic steroids. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do that. I'm just saying it's a very potent muscle builder. And its rating of 100 to 100 does not indicate that it's the weakest for building muscle. That's certainly not the case. There are plenty of anabolics that have greater than 100 on their anabolic ratings chart that are going to actually probably build less muscle than testosterone because they don't have that inherent estrogenic properties through the downstream aromatization and certain other things that it is inherently capable of um, upregulating. So... And in addition, the 25 androgenicity, one fourth the side effects of tests, like fuck no, dude. Fuck no, definitely not the case whatsoever. It is less androgenic milligram for milligram and is more tissue selective than testosterone. That's definitely true. However, it doesn't mean that it is just the, the side effects in general. This is one of the most side effect ridden compounds you can possibly use and one of the most toxic compounds you can possibly use. So to imply that the 25 androgenic rating means less side effects it means less androgenic activity relative to, so to testosterone but it still doesn't mean it's exactly four times less and it's four times more anabolic like that's not how it's going to work dude and at the end of the day this is one of the most side effect ridden compounds you can possibly use and no there's a reason why the top bodybuilders don't touch this shit you know there's a reason why it would only be pulled out maybe maybe peaking for a contest or peaking for some sort of strength event. It would never be used in an off-season context for building muscle. This would be the absolute last anabolic that any sane person who's trying to build as much muscle as possible would be turning to is Superdrol. It is like the literal 
contradictory thing to being conducive to muscle growth. It's going to fucking nuke your appetite to the point that you cannot possibly eat enough to actually yield the muscle tissue gain that you would want to get out of the compound. It is not organ friendly whatsoever. Everything about it will fucking ruin your blood work. It's like one of the worst compounds you could possibly use for muscle growth, in my opinion. Maybe for two to three weeks, it has some insane properties that can make it an acute performance booster that is like far and above, you know, what, you know, testosterone can do in two to three weeks. But this is a temporary thing. You're not going to build permanent contractile tissue in two to three weeks that justifies the use of n fucking cranking your liver enzymes through the roof and destroying your appetite and destroying like your ability to actually make use of your exposure to anabolics. So this is a compound I would never, ever, ever recommend in an off-season context when building muscle is the priority. So I do not think it is the best steroid or the best choice or the whatever. And I think this was a, uh, you know, like I can see why people ta tagged me in this because everyone already knew the answer to this shit before they even see the video probably. So would I recommend Superdrol? No, I wouldn't, to be honest. It has a very, very limited applications and um like is it a a good compound well you have to consider first of all it was abandoned for a reason it's not it was not pursued by pharmaceutical companies and these are companies that were actually comparing other anabolic steroids to superdrol to see which is more efficacious in a clinical setting for muscle wasting and other kind of uh um you know diseases and whatnot that it could be applicable for and it was deemed to be subpar so you know that kind of shows what stance the people who are much smarter than us had on the compound's efficacy themselves when they were literally fucking designing it. So, you know, that again, though, that doesn't necessarily mean that in a bodybuilding context, it's far worse or anything, but, you know, the compound itself is very, very powerful, but it's very, very toxic, and it just makes no sense to use in an off-season, in my opinion. So, you know, the applications for it are very, very limited, and it makes almost no sense for the majority of people, in my opinion. So anyways... Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Um, I recommend a lab test panels and diagnostics. Obviously, if this is something you'd be pursuing, um, whether it's TRT or you are going to, you know, delve into the realm of anabolic steroids, it would be wise to have baseline blood work. It would be wise to have on-cycle blood work. It would be wise to have post-cycle blood work. These are things you should have worked out already and figured out what you need. But, um, you know, if you want to facilitate that and have high-quality oversight from people who understand their shit, um, check out my clinic. Link in the description below. And anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below as well. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.